Hello, everyone. This is Will. Oh, this is Alex. Welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Mostly. Ugh, God. Okay. So, fair warning, this is not going to be an average review again. Yeah, you know, uh, there's... I'll be honest, with some of these movies, I just, I think we just have a little more fun with these just all over the place off the cuff reviews yeah and this is one that deserves it i think so i think like better movies deserve like a like a breakdown a full like in-depth you know, because there's like certain scenes we really like in movies so like they get a full breakdown so you know like what happens leading up to that and then why we like it you have like a reason why the scene is so important to mm -hmm. the movie because you know in some movies they actually know what the fuck they're doing and make a movie that's actually entertaining and no. uh, well made. No memes. Well, this this movie does not do any of those things. The film, um, the first of seventy nine. Can you call this a film? Like, are we going movie. with the film? Like, let's, yes. Let's degrade it. It's it's a it's a movie. It's a thing. <clears throat> it's call called Kill the Golden Goose. Stupid name, stupid poster, stupid movie. Okay, that's, the, just, that's just, <laughs> no. Will there are multiple reviews out there that, that say that you know this is good. That, that this is a martial arts classic. This is God's gift to martial art. Set martial arts in the seventies. Okay, the same Hidden decade. Gym. Yeah, the same decade that had Enter the Dragon. Yes, that had. Um, the 36th Chamber of Shaolin. Um, did, like, Flying Guillotine. Flying Guillotine, yeah. Did... Um, Drunk, Drunken Master. Did Street Fighter come... Uh, Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Uh, Sony Chiba, which was actually a really good martial All of these movies are before this movie, by the way. Yeah. They came out but before this. In the same decade. You know all those movies? Nah. You know what? Fuck them. Those didn't... Those weren't genre-defining films, okay? This defines its genre. This defines its genre at the end of the decade where martial arts films were the biggest. Now, they at do... At the end of well, the yeah. decade. It's like all... You know, all those movies built up <laughs> to, to this. This. <laughs> this is a culmination of all the martial arts film and, like, all the, like, techniques that we've learned through the years. Even the and movies is... on the podcast that we've had. Yes. Which aren't, like, you know classic martial arts movies or whatever even all those have led up to this this is now to be fair the reviews do mention that this is a a little bit more plot heavy than most because <laughs> oh, you know it's it's a deep film you mean how there's like maybe maybe four action scenes in this movie please <laughs> that's being a little generous i you know i love the wannabe like michael mann dialogue where it's like cops versus robbers and the streets and it's, it's, it's like a michael mann movie but if it was you can end up in two for 900 years 900 if you years. keep acting like and this. that's good behavior so do you want to help us or do you want to die in jail like He's, you know, it's like it's delivered like, by a hippie man with a fucking turquoise choker. He never dresses like a cop in the whole movie. It's fine. He, no, he dresses like a hippie, and like three characters have uh, no the shit, same haircut, the exact same fucking haircut. So it's really hard to tell with, like, which gray who's hair. Who. Yeah. Th this okay. Th the re I don't know. I I I want to know. All the people, but the, no, the randos you know online. Why, you know why? Because Ed Park is God King. I don't care. He is God King, gift to martial arts. I don't care. Forget about Bruce Lee. If fucking God King Ed Park is here, look, listen. Even if, even if you found out somehow, you found out that Bruce Lee was a fucking fraud, who sat on his ass all day jerking off. Even if that was, like, discovered, I don't care, because at least he had the fucking courtesy to make his movies entertaining. Yes. I would love to know those 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 handful of people who've actually seen this pile of shit, who talk about good choreography. I want to know 
what about this movie is exciting? Because there's people out there saying, like, yeah, this is, you know, it's a bit plot heavy, but the choreography is good. Is the choreography good? No. It's not. It, it's no. the most basic baby shit. There is literally a fight scene. It's the, the first fight in the fucking movie, I might add. Where it's just like a guy attacks and then the other guy just like takes his arm and pushes him down. And the guy shakes his head, stands up, repeat, repeat, rinse, repeat. That's Epic. one of the fight scenes. Another fight scene is uh, he's pushing an old lady on a wheelchair and they're like... Well, you shouldn't take the old lady out in the sun. And then, like, like one of the, the guys is like, "Oh shit, it's a so setup." He, he like chops his arm and then throws him on the ground, like punches the other guy, and then just like breaks his neck. And then, like, you know how Donkey Kong does his little like pounding on the ground thing? That's basically what he does to one of the actors. The guy in the wheelchair, he like flips him back, and the guy's on the grass, and he just kind of like Donkey Kongs him. And then... but don't worry, God, King, God King Ed Park, <laughs> but he's a sledgehammer of a man. I've never seen anyone do this amount of damage, bro. Because he murders all three of them, right? And then they're at the morgue, and then they're like, I, I've never seen a man do this much damage. It's like he had a sledgehammer or something. Who the fuck blow me? This is an ego trip. This is a fucking ego trip on film. Because here's... The, the basic plot is... Ed Park is a fucking god-tier assassin. Named Mauna Loa. And in the beginning of the movie, he sets up like a five-minute long fucking wire thing in a car. And a guy gets in the car and somehow the wires wrap around his head and cut his head off. And then immediately after, a guy walks into like his office which is apparently next to a fucking junkyard with like a bunch of banging noises yes and he's like there's this like investigation going on into our corporation for some stuff and there's three witnesses who are going to testify and like i need you to take them out and he's like i'll pay you a hundred thousand and then he's like no the price just went up it'll be one million and then he, i guess he takes the job and movie <laughs> Movie. Simple plot. I mean, how, how how hard can it be? Yeah, that's fair. Now, okay, so looking it up, Ed Parker, he did have... He, he did basically f uh, found, like, American Kimpo. Look, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, but from what we watched okay, you can't, in the film... You couldn't tell that this is a grand master of Kimpo. Because this movie's bullshit. This movie sucks my dick. Like it has, I see. What I don't get is it has martial arts, barely martial artists in it. Yeah, right. These are actual martial artists. Supposedly, both of the two like main antagonists or whatever are martial artists. It even says it on the poster. It goes as far as be like, oh, versus the grandmaster. You know, like all this stuff. It's like, and then you watch it. Yeah, but it's like. It's baby shit. Like Ed Parker, like didn't I, I? I hate to say this, but he didn't look good in the film. Dude, th th nobody. Kind of looked like chubby and like I don't know. Like I'm sure in his prime, and I would still probably not fuck with him. And I'm sorry no. for the Ed Parker state. I know he's passed <laughs> away and everything, but in this movie, I I mean, if I was Ed Parker, I probably wouldn't be proud of this movie. No. There's no way I'd look back at this and be like, oh, this was a great movie. Yeah, like, this is this is what I want people to fucking know me by. Like, remember me by. I mean, look, only, like, 50 people have seen this movie. So. Thank God, because, like, you know, if you like Ed Parker, just go watch any of his other movies. Well, the thing is that he's not really an actor. No. Which... He's like a... I think he does fight choreography. Here's the thing, though, Will. But... <laughs> not... Because, you know, you know, there's a lot of, like, martial artists out there. There's a lot of martial arts choreographers. Yes. There's not everybody can be an actor. And that's fine. That's totally fine. Maybe Ed Parker should have just stayed off the screen. Because some people can't be actors. We've had movies after movie after movie on this podcast proving that. And now we have another one. Because, <laughs> again, 
the writing, I mean, I know the writing of the movie is just abs- absolute garbage. Have we even explained the like the plot? I told, yeah, I basically okay, said the right. start of, yeah. but because here's the thing, like he shows up to Los Angeles to do his job and that's where we get introduced to our two cops, one of whom is dressed like a hippie and a third guy in like sunglasses and a pickup truck who just kind of shows up scene after scene. We have no idea until who the he is. very end when we find out he's working with our assassin man. Yes. Uh, and it just it goes like beat for beat what you think this kind of movie will like like will do. It's kind of cliche, uh, kind of cliche. It's very cliche. But when you say beat for beat, okay, because I said in my head like I I I can see what they're thinking. Yes, they wanted this to be like. Like, if you've watched any Charles Bronson movie from the 70s, where he plays, like, a fucking assassin or something, and he shows up, and he's, like, he's kind of the bad guy, but you're rooting for him, because he's a fucking badass assassin. At no point was I rooting for anyone in this film. Like, in your head, that's what they wanted, right? But here's the problem. This this has, like, the appeal of a dirty sack of potatoes. Yeah. Because the assassin guy... Lame. Lame as fuck. The two cops? Lame as fuck. Every single character is lame, says stupid shit through the entire movie, yeah. and then does bad martial arts. Th- there's like our police I get captain it, guy. I get that it was probably the director or the choreographer. I, I, don't, know who cho- I don't know who choreographed this bullshit. <laughs> but like, if you're putting martial arts artists on screen and showing that, you should be ashamed of yourself. Well, another thing, cardinal sin. I don't know, maybe Americans just can't pull it off, but half of the fights are just, like, done in close-up. It's, like, close-up, or, like, it's all in, like, a fucking dark, dingy hallway. See, this is what I don't get, because we've run into quite a few movies that do close-ups for their martial arts scenes, and it's just confusing and stupid. And it's lazy. It's it's just lazy because you don't have to show them like moving around and you can just shit. keep cutting and it's like at that point just don't even do a fucking action scene. You just I don't know, have them like shoot guns at each other or something. Well they did. Oh that well yeah, they did that too. Because our epic our epic finale when Ed Parker scales up the fucking building and busts where they're holding the golden goose, the third hostage. He like, bursts in and shoots like five guys. Yeah, then the golden goose refers to like the prime witness, the last one. He's like he's, but he's like the big one. Yeah, like apparently he's the one that's gonna win the entire the case case against this company. Yes. And so he climbs, he scales the building, kills the dudes, and then he kills the golden goose. So they fucking failed already, and this, you're just like. Okay, yeah. what's you're like at that point when they kill the golden goose, you're just like, what the fuck is the rest the point of the rest of the movie? That they're gonna There's literally no point to any there's no motivation anymore. They killed the golden goose. Oh, but Will, you didn't care about the police captain and the fact that his lady who he apparently was stole, married to Manaloa. Who he stole from Manaloa who's now his gets shot at the end and now he wants revenge against Manaloa and and they have a they duke it out in a horribly choreographed fight scene in a you, fucking warehouse. You know why I don't care because the detective because the police chief looks like 2 seconds at his dead wife and does nothing about it and then goes away. But they played the sad piano music for like 2 seconds I know. and then it's just over with and then they're in a warehouse where it's all dark and you can barely see any action. And then they have a final fight scene where it's just like just terribly choreographed, like them picking shit up and tr- swinging it at each other. I know it's like we, let's, I know it's just like we've all seen those final fight scenes where they have like a billion objects and they use all of them, and it's like cool. But in this one, it's just like eh. remember. Okay, again, we keep mentioning it. Enter the dragon. Final yeah. fight scene. The fucking bad guy has these claws, and then he fucking keeps scratching Bruce Lee with them. And they're fucking dangerous. And then Bruce Lee has to get the upper hand because he doesn't have a weapon. And then he fucking beats his ass. Like, no, no, this is... Will, this... This, <laughs> this is a martial arts classic. 
Go watch any other 70s martial arts movies. The 26th Chamber is from the 70s. All of these movies, dude. Like, there's so many good yeah. ones. Like, what is it? Uh, like, Tiger and the Eagle in the, sha- in the Eagle's Shadow or something like that? Yeah. Um, there's so many. Oh, the my God. The one-armed, one-armed swordsman. There's so many good fucking 70s movies. Just fucking, oh, my God. Like, Pick just, any. It makes me angry that people are calling this a fucking martial arts classic. I know. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you that you your mongoloid brain can't wrap your head around this is just a bad movie? It's just, dude, at the end of the day, this is just a boring fucking movie. I know it has your god king, Ed Parker, <laughs> and I like, sure, okay, he started American Kempo, he's a great guy, but maybe he shouldn't be on camera. This is a shit movie. Yes. It's just a shit movie, like, and I'm not joking, 80% of this movie is just the cops doing like bullshit investigations i'm sorry it was snake in the eagle's shadow yeah but yeah 80 percent of the movie is just the cops doing boring investigations with like stupid wannabe hard-boiled noir dialogue and like there's a stupid like love subplot with uh mauna loa and um the woman yeah but then she- so there's, so there's like this woman that picks him up at the airport. We don't know well, we what know, who she is. We know she's in a relationship with a guy driving for because they get into a fight because she's into Manaloa in, instantly. Bro, it's not even like I'm not joking. She's just like one look at him at our fucking dad. One look at our dad, dad bod martial artist. Cuz boy, when you say dad bod that's a dad bot, and he has, he, <laughs> and and she fucking loves it. She's just like all over it, and the guy's she like, she even gives him the Manaloa special, which is fruit, some salami, and some nuts, because he <laughs> requests it, and she's like, oh, you want the Manaloa special? Mm. Mm, and then she fucking the Manaloa special. And the guy, I guess it's like their house or something. Her and the fucking driver, and he's just like, <laughs> what are you interested in that brown pineapple for? So eventually he he has sex with her in a, in a scene that's unprompted and because di- he's just sitting in bed like looking like a dad and she's like naked and comes over and they just have sex and he gives her his Hawaiian like his necklace little, like puka shell necklace and then she I think gets it's, killed I think that's what it's called I'm not sure but and then um, the driver like kills her and eh. and then Manaloa at, at a later scene towards the end. Manaloa discovers that the guy killed the lover. We get another epic fight scene. And they fight for a minute, and then Manaloa has him on the fucking table. With a fork pointed at his throat. And he's like, throat. if you lie, you die. And then, like, the guy's like, I don't know, I don't know, she, whatever. And then uh, she just disappeared, and he, like, stabs him with a fork. And, <laughs> and then my and favorite. The greatest fucking death. Move ever. Mm, power move right here. He He takes a fucking plate (laughs) and just (laughs) cracks it in half over his face. And that's, like, so horrifying that our guy dies. Listen. And and I'm not joking. That's what happens. It broke the... He snapped it so quick and so fast. It it broke the sound barrier over the guy and, like, busted his eardrums and destroyed his brain. (laughs) Ed Parks... Ed Fucking Parker can like plate shattering. Like Bruce Lee had the one inch punch. Ed Parker has the plate crack. That's literally what happens. He fucking cracks the plate over this dude's head and he's dead. I was expecting like, you know, for him to like crack the plate and then like, I don't know, stab him with the broken No. No. He just breaks the plate. And then that uh, dead. Well he does this so weird like ah, and then like he's just dead. Dead. This is, I, th- that's I the can't. that's the epic choreography that we were promised. It's just like okay, so I don't know. Like it's weird to me because these are professionals. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> these two are like this is like the grandmaster of American Kempo. He started American 
Kempo, and you this have is the best they could do. Presumably a like a cr- another a cha- like a champion of some. I'm not sure because I, I I'm not like huge in like the martial arts circles. I just like martial arts movies. Yeah, to be honest. But I'm presumably not, the but other presumably guy. You have like two very well trained martial artists, right? So presumably you wouldn't need much choreography because they know what they're doing. They can just have a fucking fight on screen. Or they can think up of something really cool. Here's my problem. These are the mo- some of the most blatantly choreographed fight scenes I've ever seen. Well, do you remember the epic scene with the, f- with the first witness where he's eating a fucking steak and our dude, like, chokes him and shoves a piece of steak in his throat? Dude, in the last fight scene, there's literally a part where they're fighting, like, the choreographed fighting, and th- for some fucking reason, Ed Parker just holds up a board that the guy kicks in half, but he holds it up so it's, like, clear that the guy's gonna kick it in half, like, you know. Yeah. Like, it, 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 that was, like, very much supposed to happen. And it's not, like, organic. And it's obvious. No, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's completely unorganic. Yeah. Like this, like you were saying, this movie is like anti cool. No, that's like, that's my biggest beef here. That's my biggest bitch with it too, because it just like it's like so lame. It is lame as shit. It is so like every single scene is lame, and then even the scenes that are like oh, I was gonna say the scenes that aren't lame, but that doesn't make sense because every scene's lame. But like. There's scenes that literally make zero sense why they're in the movie. No, it's they're just... They're just, like, random scenes of, like, people, like, driving or, like, people, Or, or like, someone, like... Someone talking to, like, someone, and it's just, like, who's... Why... Who is the dude... The old white dude on the phone? It never explained that. No. I don't know. Well, actually, well, if you want to know Pointless, I think that very, very end of the movie, the very... Because last here's here's what happens we we like fucking <sighs> Mauna Loa dies eventually in the lamest again anti cool because he he wears body armor which is just fucking tape it's not like Kevlar vest and they it's got, just tape and it's like shot three times have you seen the fifth element you know what she wears imagine like yeah that's what he fucking wears as body armor so he keeps getting shot and like walking and shot and walking and then eventually our other guy kicks him and in through the power of bad editing and slow-mo and and horrible slow-mo he is stabbed so he impales, and he like he impales himself on a forklift and then he does this like stupid like grin at the camera and then scene end and it's our fucking guy who hired him is like well then mr max the case has failed and we've won yet again ha ha and then the camera pans over <laughs> to and it's a fucking like cryogenically frozen mummy and movie. Is this part of a series that I'm not like uh, that I'm aware why? of? Why is just a standalone movie? It is. So why even set that up? Okay, but well, why is there a cryogenically frozen mummy man? I don't know. I like if this movie was so great, why didn't it spawn sequels? Because it's too epic. It's too epic to have a sequel where they explain what the fuck is going on with that old guy cryogenically frozen. Like, did we need that? No. You know why? You know why it's in there? Because they thought it looked cool. But nothing... I don't know. I can just picture in my head what they, th- how cool they thought this shit was. How cool they thought our fucking dad wrecking people through bad editing and choreography was and how cool the wannabe fucking film noir dialogue was but this is one of if not the lamest fucking action movie on this podcast so far i think it's probably the lamest action movie we've watched on this podcast because we've had some fucking whack-ass shit before lots of it but at least it did like i don't know like at least it they didn't like, do you remember Black Force? Yeah. Where they had, like, the disclaimer in the beginning of, like, like, slow motion has been employed to capture, like, special techniques. And then you watch the movie and the special techniques are just, like, a basic-ass flip. Here's the thing, though. Even that movie 
was less fucking lame than this. Because at least in, like, those movies, like, our heroes and shit are, like, you know, like, they're in shape. You can at least, like, see them on camera, even if it's whack. They're, they're at least doing things that, like, you can't do yourself. Even recent recent example death dimension yeah terrible action movie right terrible awful but but jim kelly is in shape he is in shape and like and he actually does martial arts yeah in the movie and it's terribly choreographed because it's close-ups but at least you see him fucking hit people and there's more than just like two fight scenes and the fight scenes in the movie last for more than two seconds yes shocking it's like it's an awful movie, but at least it's coo- it still manages to be I don't cooler. Know. It, it's still cooler than what we got. Yeah, like this is just like it's just limp. It's just like a wet blanket. Yeah, it's like the wet blanket of martial arts films. It's not a hidden gem. It's like it should just stay hidden, just vault it up and never watch it. Imagine, like imagine someone's dad making a movie with his friends, a martial arts movie. That's what it felt like watching this. Yeah. It felt like watching someone's bad home movie. Of like, oh, like, you know, like 20 years ago, I was like a black belt in this shit. Let's make a movie now. And then you watch and you're like, oh, dad. Like, why, dad? Please put this away. Yeah, but look, like, it's going to get to the scene where I make out with a beautiful woman. (laughs) Dad, you're married. Don't worry, I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill the wife. Uh, this later is in the movie. Th- this is unspeakably lame. I just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Home movies might be able to do better. I'm shocked at how lame this thing is. I am shocked too because apparently you got like grandmasters in this fucking movie. Him, there's you... grandmasters. There's people on. There's random peeps on the internet who I... like it. I've said I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. L- listen, martial arts movies they don't have to have much, right? We don't you, ask for a lot. You just you just need cool fight scenes. That's literally a, a, a any, basic setup. A basic setup and, and cool, cool fights. fight scenes, which That's, this movie has the basic setup. Now, what I've said before is th- this has all the makings of a good martial arts film. Not right? the execution. It has all the makings. You spread it all out. You're like, okay, we got actual martial artists. We got, you know, kind of a cliche contrived plot, but it works. It, it's dri- fine. It drives it along, whatever. It's an assassin. It's going to be cool, right? So you got all the workings. You have an assassin, a badass assassin, and then another guy who's like, he's got a history with him, so he's going to take him down. And they have like a Simple. woman in between them. Yeah, it, like it, it, it's happened in a lot of movies. But a lot least, of better movies. But at least it drives the plot along. Yeah. And so you get all the workings, and then they try and execute it, and they just fumble. There's like It's like someone just falling down a stairs with all the ingredients, and they just fucking just roll into this giant mound of shit. Do you remember... Do you remember the scene in this film at the disco where for no reason at all, our cops are dressed up one of them is dressed up as a beer keg. Mm-hmm. And the other one's Streaker. A Streaker, where apparently half of his shirt... It's only half of his shirt that's torn off for some reason. I don't know why, but it's not the whole thing. Whatever. And they're at this party, and they do a horrible Sugar Daddy song. And then it... they have... And then it's like... For some... It's really weird, because they're doing like the Sugar Daddy song, and there's like a woman's voice. But then they show the performers. It's like all middle-aged men. Yeah. Like it's like a mariachi band or something. And then they have a musical number, but during the middle of the musical number, they have a shakedown where this detective in a fucking barrel <laughs> is shaking down, down a drug. He's not even like a drug dealer. He's like trying to bend his arm in this giant wooden barrel, and I'm just like, this looks so fucking dumb. Even the way it's done, it's like, okay, you have a guy at a, like a club, possibly selling drugs, and there's a detective, and he's gonna shake him down, and it's like picture in your head when you're picturing that scene in your head though do you picture that the detective is a middle-aged dad wearing a a fucking beer keg and the scene is just it's just so lame because he's just like 
this is, this is your drugs. He's like, no, I don't know that. He's like, this is your drugs. He's, he's like, like, I'm not he's a. Like, he's like, oh, come push- on, man. What does he say? I'm not. I'm not a pusher. I'm a packer. I'm a packer, man. Just like leave me alone. He's like, who do you work for? If you don't tell me, you'll be sent away to the queue. And when the, it's he's, just he's, so lame. The whole time he's in this giant cumbersome barrel, and he's like, there's a part where he's like refusing to tell him, so he like kind of like bends him over to like threaten him, and it's just like, come on, it's just a dad. So what? It's I just two dads. Even if it was like a costume party, why on earth? Why on? Why in any circumstance would a cop? Wear a fucking cumbersome barrel as a fucking, like, as their work uniform for undercover. Like, how can you, like, even, how is that even feasible? Well, I'm not, I'm not joking. Half of the characters in this movie are cops. Not a single fucking person in this movie wears a goddamn uniform. No. There's not, my favorite, though, is that the police captain, who I guess moonlights as a fucking kung fu fighter on the side... Every time he goes somewhere, he flashes his badge. My favorite thing, though, is that they don't actually show it. Because I guarantee... It's just his wallet. They didn't have one. And it's just like, he like opens his wallet to people. Yeah, but it's like a far-off shot. It's like a yeah, far-off so you can't still actually shot, see it. so you can't see anything. But you just see them reacting like, oh, man. Whack. Fucking whack. What's the part where he says, like, Hawaii's greatest volcano is going off or whatever? I don't know. Sometime after they find the woman dead just... on the beach, and he's like, "It's Mauna Loa, Hawaii's greatest volcano, and it's just erupted." Whack! Fucking lame. They say stuff like, "If you cook, what? Like, I'm gonna this cook... turkey's gonna cook." No, I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna cook this turkey. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, he like he says time to cook this turkey, but the, another time he said like. Time to kick a chicken in the butt. Now get out, you turkey, or whatever. Yeah. I get <laughs> or, or the Hispanic guy who keeps saying A. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's... Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, 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 hey. I was like, oh, my God. What was the point of that scene? I don't know. I still don't they know. They pull over a Hispanic guy in, like, a fucking redone, like, 1940s car, and then they hassle him, and he's just like, yeah, I, I know so-and-so, I and think, then end scene. I think that was Manaloa's cousin? I don't, I don't know. They don't explain, like, jack shit in this movie. We just get cops like you're hassling suppo- people. You're supposed to know what's going on, but the only exposition we get is of what's going on with, like, the court case. Yeah. And that's, like, that's just, like, basic plot. And then we don't get anything else. No. You don't get to know who is who until, like, the very end with that one guy in the truck that we didn't know who he was until Manaloa he got out of his truck. Because there's a, a scene that I, I still don't get the... I don't really get the point of this fucking scene where after they the cops shook down a drug dealer earlier in the movie and threatened him with 900 years in prison. Oh, yeah. And Smiley. Smiley and, and the then, other and one of the other guys names is Shaker. Shaker. And then there's a what what one of them like the detectives is called like Danger or something like that. Oh, it's oh my god. What is it? It's like it's like it's, Dozer? D- I can't remember. It's like Danger Dozer or something like that. Some stupid ass name. But they have a meet another meeting with Smiley at like a playground and he's about to like I guess he sets him up or something? Because there's a sniper there and then he shoots and our detective apparently has super hearing because he dodges the bullet and it hits Smiley and Smiley just like read the paper and dies. His name is Detective Hazard. Ha okay. <laughs> it's even dumber than I thought. Yeah. Hazard. Hazard. That was our that was our main detective. Don't you love how they even had a scene towards the end where Hazard is getting a new gun that shoots like twenty two. I forgot that happened. Twenty two bullets. Was because that what he in, shot? <laughs> the, the fucking gallon of water. Bro, that was the stupidest shit. Cause like he's in the middle of the desert, and the guy's like. Yeah, this is the most powerful hand in the world. Shoots rifle ammo. And then he shoots like a fucking barrel and it blows up the whole table. Now, you know, this is funny because the same gun is used to shoot Manaloa three times and it doesn't do anything to him. It's like a little pea shooter. And then he fucking gets kicked into a forklift. So that gun, so show, okay, so in this movie logic, 
<laughs> showing this gun is like important foreshadowing, right? For it to do absolutely jack shit. Mauna Loa's <laughs> body armor is so strong. The tape on his body is fucking invincible. Epic. Because fucking Hawaii's greatest volcano doesn't go down easy, okay? Until you kick him into and until you kick him and he stumbles into a forklift. I, I... <laughs> okay, but again, like I just will ask you, what movie logic would foreshadow a powerful gun and then have it do fucking nothing in the end scene? I don't know. That's I... like that's like in in any other like action movie. If like the hero like got like a really like powerful weapon, like say he's like he's looking for tech and like he finally finds this thing to like like end the fucking villain's reign of terror or yeah. whatever and he has this like special weapon that's gonna fucking fucking do exactly what he wants it to do and you know if it's a great if it's okay. a good movie at the end of the movie he uses the weapon and it's epic because the guy like blows up or something it's right fucking epic yeah but think about it so like in this movie's logic you get to the final scene and like the villain's like standing and like thinking like this guy has no moves left so a guy pulls out a fucking his fucking ju giant gun and blows him up and well not not even in this movie's logic it's like he pulls the trigger and it just makes a little mark on the dude three times he it makes a little mark on the dude's thing and he's just like was that supposed to fucking hurt? Was that supposed to be epic? And then, and then some other guy out of nowhere kicks him into a, a spike. In the uh, yeah, end movie. What was the point of showing the fucking gun? If it does jack shit. This is why this is the lamest fucking movie <laughs> ever. They make such a big deal out of certain scenes and then they go nowhere. No. Like... They show characters that don't fucking matter. They have, like, the wife, the, the, like, love triangle between Manaloa and everyone. And then Manaloa just fucking shoots her and no one cares. No one cares. Not even Manaloa. Not even the, the not even the captain. He, uh, like, he, he's barely, sad like, for, like, two seconds. Yeah, he, he, he cares a little bit and then goes on his business. Like, scenes just go absolutely fucking nowhere. I, this movie is, I, I am baffled. This is the pits. This is the I'm calling pits. it now. This is the worst, not the worst movie we've watched, but the worst action movie we've watched on this podcast. I don't know. I'd have to do a fucking deep dive back, but this is a special. As far one. as like action scenes. Oh, because I'm sure we've had like worst of the worst that are action movies, but at least the action scenes are like maybe more well done than what we got that i mean there's barely any action scenes in this movie so that's that's the first sin well, well the second sin a... is the fucking you get two martial artists and it's fucking lame i don't know how that happens no it's epic it's realistic well you know i think you're just salty that this movie is a little more plot heavy but the epic fight scenes truly make up for it why would you want to watch an action like a martial arts movie that's like too plot heavy because this is too plot heavy well here's the thing like like it tipped the fucking scale you can make a martial arts action movie with a good plot yes you can but this this ain't it no not everybody can be you know john woo or whatever we can't all do that because enter the dragon does have a an okay plot yeah i mean it's a little cliche but it's not bad yeah but you know not everybody can do that or even like you know like the raid movies like we can't all do that it's fine that's why some people you make a simple plot and but apparently no fuck you <laughs> no we need to suffer so that's another thing I don't get. Simple plot, but they spend way too much fucking time explaining every intricate detail in terrible fashion. Yeah, details we don't even need. Details, like, they over-explain everything. Yeah. And then they don't explain a lot of the important stuff. So they over-explain, like, certain characters that have no meaning in the fucking movie. And then they, like, over-explain, like, stupid shit that we don't really care about. Mm -mm. But they don't bother to explain, like anything else yeah like who's the woman 
who's the fucking organization that like hired him with the fucking cryogenically frozen why, why old is the, man? Why is the boss of this evil corporation a cryogenic mummy? Why did they have a whole plot where the whole idea was this like this martial arts captain is going to stop this guy from killing a bunch of witnesses and then completely fucking fails and then we're supposed to feel good at the end when he kills the bad guy even though he's accomplished his fucking job. Well, our he he accomplished everything he set out to do. Our martial arts captain who is like the opposing side of Mauna Loa is completely unaware that there is an assassination like plot until like the last 10 minutes of the movie. Yeah. That's their priorities. We don't even they, they don't even fucking know. So it's like the movie just kind of coasts along just stumbling around until the last 10 minutes they're like oh yeah they should probably learn. he should probably know that this is happening yeah he probably should and they're gonna protect the witness and do this all this like really like big setup of protecting this witness and then Manolo is just gonna easily infiltrate do a, a garbage kill, shoot yeah kill <laughs> kill the kill the main witness the key witness and then kill his like his lover and then bye do you remember when do you remember the epic death of the key witness when we just get a fucking awkward close up of like Monolo's knees and the witness and then we just hear like awkward like fucking dubbed in like smacking noises and then he's just dead I guess yeah because fucking Hawaii's biggest volcano <laughs> biggest erupted biggest volcano erupted okay <laughs> so I, I, you know I get it now my fucking lizard brain is I can't understand it I can't understand how epic it was. We can't wrap our brains. Maybe we're not action fans. No, it's fine because according to some people, every action fan needs this film in their collection. So, you know, it's like my collection would be like, you know, like the like the raid, you know, hard boiled John Wick, John trilogy. Wick, Enter the Dragon, kill the golden goose right there. Mm, just right in that collection. Mm. Yeah, they won't look out of place at all. Someone's, Everyone's gonna be like, "What is that?" Someone like on like the IMDb reviews that even like went as far as to say this is like one of the most classic martial arts movies ever made. Ever, <laughs> like classic. One of them said like this like started American martial arts, and I'm like, wrong, honey, no. Yeah, but yeah, bro. No one cared about American martial arts. No one, no one in America cared about martial arts before this movie came along. You know, the to yeah, totally. This was the first. There wasn't like a giant martial arts fucking boom that happened in the early seventies. No, and there was literally a giant hit song called "Kung Fu Fighting" in like nineteen seventy four. Literally, think about it, Alex. But no. This started martial arts film at the end of the 70s? That's a bold statement. No, no one cared about martial arts until the god, the gods created, killed a golden goose. Yes, this is the golden goose. <laughs> like, you know, we were all just living our basic ass they life. They didn't kill the golden goose because the golden goose is this movie. It laid an egg it laid and an it's egg. this movie. This movie, this, this classic God tier martial arts. <laughs> I want to know how how mush my brain has to be to like this movie. Can you this? Can you imagine liking this movie? Like legitimately liking this movie? Like I, you would have had to have never seen a single fucking action movie in your life. Scratch that. A single movie in your life. This would be like have to be your first like movie you've ever yeah. watched. But even if then, like, you haven't seen an action movie, you, like, you might be mildly surprised when they start doing their stupid fucking, like, wacka wacka bad choreography. But if you've seen any other action movie in your life, this is, this is not it. Even basic ass action movies have better fucking scenes than this. Yeah. Movies on this goddamn podcast are fucking better than this bullshit. So, I don't know, like, you probably already know, but let's do a shitty to pretty. One. In this shit, one. I, I can't. Wish, I wish we could give it lower. I really do. I, I you know, I, I would love to be able to give this a two. No. I can't. 
I would have said if it, because, I mean, it was kind of ridiculous in the beginning, and, like... Oh, it's ridiculous all the way through. Yeah, but, like, it had, the, I guess, the makings of, like, maybe being a two for, like, being, like, kind of mildly entertaining. If there are more heads cut off. Yeah, because that, that first part where he cuts the guy's head off, I was like, okay, if there's more, like, death scenes like this, then it's going to earn a better rating. But there was nothing. No. It just, like, went lame. Yeah, it's just like, okay, death scene one, he's fucking wraps wires all around this car and then it cuts the guy's head off okay fine and then death scene two he just chokes the guy why would they do like such an death elaborate... scene three he donkey kongs him <laughs> and then at the end he just like kills him through the power of awful editing yep that's it so i don't like i don't understand why make such an elaborate death scene at the beginning of your movie to cock tease you, Will? I guess. You know what they did? They took your pee-pee and they just rubbed the tip. And then they just, like, they just backed <laughs> off. Because if there was more ridiculous shit like that, then it it would have been better. Well, it would have at least, you know, it would have possibly approached something like not if we, lame. If we got, like, fucking, like, MacGyver assassin, like, that would be way better. Dude, I fucking, I, I fucking wish... Like, I wish. Like, if he just, like, elaborately put together all these fucking, like, kill traps for everyone, I would have fucking loved this movie. Yeah, it would have been great. Then but no, to... he didn't. But no, it's just lame. He just walks in their house. Literally, one of the most exciting death scenes, because it's, like, one of the only ones is where he chokes a guy and then shoves a piece of steak in his mouth. Because that's gonna fool everybody, baby. Because he just fucking is, like, rams fucking, like, this milk cow into this guy's throat. <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's supposed to be like a cool death scene. We were dude the way they filmed it though, you know they wanted you to be like, ooh. And if you're a smooth brain, you might have been like, Oh yeah, this is classic. This is classic martial arts. Yeah, forget about the scene in that Rambo movie where he rips out the guy's Adam's apple. Bro, you know, if you even th that's a, that's a think lie. in your brain, compare the scenes from that to this, I just think in your brain, like, how fucking stupid this movie looks. No, this is the greatest martial arts movie known to man. This is the stupidest shit. <laughs> this is fucking stupid. One out of ten. Like, this is stupid as hell. Yes. I can't I can't deal with this. Like, this is some grandpa-level stupidity. We already have a contender of best of the worst. Dude, this is like writing that line of best of the worst and worst of the worst. I don't know. Well, the more I think about it, the 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 shittier my opinion gets. My opinion is shittier. I'm just, it's you know, the year's just starting off, so we might get a fucking. Uh, I know we probably will get an, like a lot more like something like Laser Blast. We have to get some more shitty films. I, I think it'll happen. Um, but like this is special. It, it, it's weird to start out like this because like usually we start out like okay, like it's bad, but it's not like. It could be a lot worse. This is like, no, it's just really fucking <laughs> bad. And like, I don't know how, if it can get worse. Apparently it can. It's really weird to start out a year on such a low note. Well, you know, <laughs> I would, some people like this movie. I mean, four people very much love this movie. Yeah. One person gave it a nine out of ten. I can't imagine. <laughs> can you believe that? Can you believe watching this a and going nine online? Nine out of ten. Can you believe sitting down, watching this movie, and then going online and being like, yeah, 9 out of 10? Can you imagine that well, like, just randomly like maybe looking up this movie? I don't know how you'd find it because no oh, one's I, watched it. I had to dig, baby. But, okay, so <laughs> going <laughs> online and being like, ooh, I wonder what this movie's all about. Someone suggested Kill the Golden Goose. I'm going to check it out on IMDb. You look at the reviews. They're all like stellar yeah right like the rating is it's only like a 5.1 which is like it's low but it's not like insanely low and like you're just like okay what do the reviews say all right cool this guy wow this guy gave it a 9 out of 10 cult classic cool like a classic like, film yeah gift to martial art film everyone should like have it's, it it's really well choreographed everything like that this is all oh, fucking cool yeah all right cool it's on amazon prime that's where we watched it by the way um it's on amazon prime i'm gonna go check this out with my prime membership and then just the click and then like you just watch this shit and then <laughs> they're just like wow that was the lamest shit ever like wow that the, the, were they joking no I, I don't know if they were no i don't think they were no they weren't i mean yeah they got the guy from fucking uh 
Kentucky Fried Movie, Fistful of Yen. The bad guy. Which, uh, even, I mean, Christ, the joke fight scenes in that are more cool than this shit. Way, way better. Ah, uh, this is lame. I, I just, I think we're done. Now we're done. This is, this is donezo. Uh, just to complete the episode, um, we have a live, live stream, stream on Sunday. A uh, little bit of change of plans. It's gonna be um, earlier. I'm fucking dumb and <laughs> double booked plans. So our normal live stream schedule is like twelve to six. This one's gonna be a little shorter and start earlier. So start around ten. We're still doing a live stream. We're gonna start around ten. Um, and we'll go until like about two thirty. So it's still gonna be. It's still gonna be like. What what is that like? God, why can't I do it's math? It's like four and a half hours. Four and a half yeah. hours. So we'll still be doing quite a bit. Like it's only gonna be an hour and a half less than what yeah. we usually do. So it's not a big deal. But uh, yeah, so get ready. We'll we'll have lunch this time instead of dinner. This is true. And so uh, yeah, we'll play a bunch of games. Talk about horror shit that and we've fall been watching this and year. All the shit. All the the pumpkin shit we've been consuming. Hell yeah. I feel like I'm turning into a fucking pumpkin <laughs> at this point. I swear to God, like it's like PSLs like every fucking day. It's fucking bad, dude. It's I'm fucking it's it's bad. Listen, October just be like that. Okay? It's true. Uh, but yeah, so uh stay tuned for that. Go on our YouTube, subscribe and like just you can get notified um for when we go live and uh come hang out and chat and Talk about your favorite horror movies or what you love about fall or Halloween. You know, like when when you get a step on that first fallen leaf and hear that crunch. <laughs> that's fucking mm, that fucking satisfying crunch. And you know summer's dead. Yep, summer's dead. Summer's just like the leaf dead. Just like the leaf you're stepping on. And your happiness you have an, just even audible like crunch. audible crunch. For your happiness. Yeah, at least our happiness. Some of you might be sad. Personally, me, I'm fucking thrilled. Yes, me too. I know, uh, and, you know, I mean, all jokes aside, we know, like, seasonal depression's a thing. So, we're sorry. But Yeah, mine's just opposite. Yeah. My happiness comes back. <laughs> yeah, because I'm not. I don't know. Summer's, Motherfuck summer. Yeah, summer's kind of hard in Utah. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> Not as bad as like Arizona or Vegas, but you know those don't even it's count. It's still rough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have seasons, sort of. Eh, barely. A lot yeah. of construction. That's like a season. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, we'll talk about all this and more on the live stream, and we'll kind of just go off like this. Um, when we're not recording an episode so uh yeah tune in sunday uh 10 o'clock or around 10 o'clock it's not gonna be exactly mountain time. at 10 o'clock mountain time uh so you know just whenever whenever you're available we'll be on for four and a half hours come hang out you can listen to it after we're done it's all there for you baby yeah we'll be around all right for uh they mostly come out at night this has been will this has been alex and we will talk to you all later Ah, oh, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.